A simple disc flicking game where players try to land more of their discs on each island than their opponents. But the game rules change with every new round, so you're going to have to be adaptable. That's the hook. I'm Adam Porter, I'm a game designer and reviewer, and on this channel I review games with a focus on product design. Flick of Faith is a 2019 dexterity game from publisher Awaken Realms, and a team of four designers whose names I will not attempt to announce, but they're showing on the bottom of the screen right now. Flick of Faith is for two to four players aged eight and up, and it plays in around 30 minutes. In Flick of Faith, players take it in turns to flick their profit discs onto the board in an attempt to have a majority on any of the islands. If a profit touches a city, their owner may discard the profit to instead place a temple on that island. The temple is bigger and it remains on the island in future rounds. Alternatively, a player might aim to land on the navel. If this happens, the profit is removed from the navel and its owner immediately scores one point plus one additional point for each island where they have discs present. At the end of a round, each player scores one point for each island they've got discs on, and then the player with the majority of discs on each island scores two points. All profits are returned to players for the next round, but the temples remain. The game lasts three or four rounds, depending on player count, and when the game ends, the highest scorer wins. So that's the basics of the gameplay, but each round starts with the reveal of two new lore cards. Players vote on which of these new laws they would like to come into effect, and these change the rules such that players might have to flick with their eyes closed, or flick two discs simultaneously with two hands, or perhaps the rules alter the scoring, making different areas of the board desirable to land on, the island in the opposite corner, or perhaps the ocean. The rule might even introduce a new playing piece, such as King Ape, a disc which starts at the navel, but if it's ever pushed onto an island, it negates any points scored in that location. Additionally, each player has a unique special ability chosen at the start of the game. So Themis breaks a tie in her favour. Ra has a larger Sphinx disc in place of one of his profits. Flick of Faith is an incredibly attractive package. The box is thin and long, with a great cover image depicting an assortment of gods playing the game on the cover. It's beautifully drawn and it illustrates the gameplay effectively. One of the gods is blindfolded and chewing her tongue in concentration as she flicks her disc off of the board. I sort of love this box and I sort of hate it at the same time. The lack of a title on the cover allows space for the brilliant art to shine, but it's always a risky commercial move. The non-standard box shape makes it really hard to store and shops are gonna really struggle to display it effectively on their shelves. The box shape has been chosen to make space for the rolled up vinyl game board, which is convenient, but quite a risk commercially speaking. I guess the contrary argument is that in a saturated board game market, perhaps bold choices in your packaging are one way of standing out. The rule book is very small and really clear and easy to follow, and there are actually very few rules. Most of the nuance of the game comes from the rules introduced on the lore cards and in the player's special abilities. These are never complex, but they could be a little bit unclear at times, and I did find myself having to look up explanations on online forums for some of the weirder rules and abilities. The onboarding process was actually pretty smooth, and frankly, I'm a big fan of flicking games, so I was really keen to try this one out. And the presentation and rulebook made it a very simple and enjoyable process. You do have to apply stickers to the wooden discs before the first game, which is always a, a slight irritation, and I did make a few mistakes which resulted in moments of panic, but they were easily rectified by peeling and reapplying. Let's get into the gameplay. Now I rate games with my own engagement ladder system, so each game scores between 0 and 3 in 5 different categories. Each point climbs the game one rung on my ladder, with a combined score of 10 or above hitting the highest level and indicating a real favourite with me. For thematic immersion, Flick of Faith scores 0. It's an entirely abstract game. I was very tempted to give the game a point just because it has such great presentation, but I, I just can't really justify it. As atmospheric as the game is, it just doesn't really make any sense outside of a fun little dexterity contest between friends. For interaction, it's a 3. There are few games as interactive as flicking games. Every move I make impacts on my opponents. If I knock their disc into a new position, that fundamentally changes their game state and options for future turns. Flick of Faith adds in majority scoring and a vote over new rules each round. It's a really interactive game. 
For challenge and stress, it's a two. The challenge in the game comes down to physical ability and the tension creeps in when you have one chance to make that vital flick to take control of an island or perhaps to dislodge an opponent. For feedback, it's a three. Flick of Faith offers up intrinsic feedback. That is the physical sensation of pulling off a masterful flick just as you intended. Knocking an opponent out of the arena is immediate and it's satisfying. And with the temples remaining from round to round, there's a sense of progression with your actions in one round feeding into the next. For meaningful choices, it's a two. Yes, the game is largely decided based on your physical ability or how effectively you're targeted by your opponents, but selecting which island you want to compete on and judging whether to take the high risk, high reward shot or just to play it safe requires strategic and tactical planning. This is not a mindless exercise at all. The overall score of 10 means that Flick of Faith reaches the highest rung of the engagement ladder. And this reflects just how I feel about the game. It's a real winner with me. One of the very best flicking games I've played, and I've played a lot. But this is where it gets interesting, because impressing me doesn't guarantee commercial success at all. I would rate some of my favourite games of all time as quite poor products. So let's see how Flick of Faith fares with my product design checklist. Is it innovative? Well, I'm going to take a slightly different approach to answering this question and refer back to one of my previous videos. In my How to Design a Flicking Board Game video, I list 10 recurring features in flicking games. So let's see how Flick of Faith compares against its competitors. The first consideration in my video was the playing pieces. What exactly are we flicking? Well, Flick of Faith uses the most predictable shape, a disc, as used in Catacombs, Crokinole, Pitch Out and Light and Dark. The next consideration is the goal of the game. Frequently, flicking games either ask you to eliminate other players' pieces, as in Pitch Out and Cube Quest, or alternatively, to accurately land your pieces in a specific location, as in Crokinole or Safranito. Flick of Faith belongs in the latter camp. It's an accuracy-based goal. Flick of Faith doesn't really feature the next few elements listed in my flicking video. The discs aren't reversible like the pieces in Catacombs, there's no blocking terrain like that seen in Pitch Out, and pieces aren't stacked on top of each other as in Cube Quest, with one exception of one of the lore cards. We don't have to worry about table edges because the game is played within a contained board. But the final two categories on my earlier list feature strongly in Flick of Faith. It's a game with many special powers. Though these are generally assigned to the player, as in Light and Dark, rather than the discs themselves, as in Catacombs. And finally, Flick of Faith makes a real feature of its variable setup. While it doesn't have predetermined scenarios like Flick 'em Up, Flick of Faith does offer a different challenge every time you play. So in conclusion, no, Flick of Faith can't really be called innovative. There are a lot of features here that we've seen before many times. Nonetheless, the unique combination of familiar elements still results in an experience which feels fresh. Does the game fulfil a need? Well, I think this is where the product fails the hardest. And indeed, I think this is where all flicking games really struggle. There just doesn't seem to be a huge audience for this stuff. Even the most famous flicking board game, Subutio, tends to disappear from toy store shelves for years at a time before relaunching with a bit of a whimper. In my experience, many people just assume that they're going to be bad at flicking and therefore the game is going to be no fun. Whereas my personal view is that just as with drawing games, being rubbish is exactly what makes a flicking game fun. But once again, my personal opinion is of little relevance if the mass audience has made their mind up to the contrary. I may be pressing this point too hard. I'm not party to sales figures for Flick of Faith or indeed any of the other flicking games that I love. I know Ice Cool did extremely well in the mass market but the more gamer-focused follow-up, Iron Forest, had a more lukewarm response on Kickstarter. I'd love to see all these games succeed in the market and to see more flicking titles. I get a different experience from each of them and I'm very happy to own a large number of games in the genre. Can the game grow with its user? Well, this is a real strength of Flick of Faith. The deck of variant rules is a nice twist and it adds loads of very welcome variety. I can see tons of scope for expansion and alternate modes of play. I love it. However, I'm not convinced that the average consumer is going to feel the same way. Mass market publishers have told me that casual players are frequently put off by too many variants. Familiarity is favoured over variability. Simplicity over perceived complexity. 
So Flick of Faith is much more likely to appeal to a hobby gamer than it is to a casual game purchaser. So let's close with my idea execution matrix. A great commercial product has an outstanding idea at its core, coupled with brilliant execution, pushing it up into the warmer red or orange part of the grid. Flick of Faith is a mediocre commercial idea. Now I'll reiterate that for me and for other flicking fans, it seems like a brilliant idea, but I'm not sure we're representative of the broadest gaming market. Personally, I really appreciate the fun variety created by the many different rules and interactions, some of which are hilarious, but for some casual players, this could all be a little bit intimidating, and for some strategy players, it could all be a bit too chaotic. In terms of execution, the presentation is gorgeous, but the box is unwieldy. The rulebook is simple and clear, but the additional rules are sometimes poorly explained. I think the team behind Flick of Faith have provided exactly the experience that they were aiming for, and I applaud them for all that, but it does feel a little bit niche. Ultimately, Flick of Faith hovers in the middle of the graph. I doubt that it's been a complete flop. The game is excellent, and that does count for a lot. But sadly, I don't see it being a perennial bestseller either. Flick of Faith joins forgotten gems like Witness and Alf Teufelkom Raus in that rare club of incredible games, which will probably remain totally overlooked. Nonetheless, I hope word of mouth is strong and that the game continues to find new fans. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll be updated about upcoming reviews and game design discussion. If you enjoyed this review, maybe go back and watch my recent video about 10 mechanisms used in flicking board games. I'll put the link in the description below. Let me know your favourite dexterity games in the comments, and I'll see you next time. All the best.